All right, Calc BC 49 Office Hours, uh, Multiple Choice and Free Response Worksheet. These are the Multiple Choice Answers, in case you didn't check them out. <clears throat> upper right corner, blue ink, number 1D, number 2D, 3D, 4B, 5C, 6D, 7, I have blank for some reason, 8, 3, 9, pole, 10B, 11E, 12B, 13A. And there's some free response too, so <clears throat> we'll go over those. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. All right. Find the number of points of intersection of the polar curves. Um, I think your best bet is to draw it because trying to solve for these, you could, you know, you could try and find them. But it doesn't say to find them, it says how many. Uh, solving that is, I don't know, it's, you could use a calculator to solve it. Um, but I would consider maybe some of the intersections might get repeated also. So let's just draw a sketch of these. That's a circle or a one petaled flower. Uh, that's a, not a cardioid, lemason of some kind, maybe in a loop. Um, so if we were to do a quick sketch, <clears throat> I'm trying to think just one second. Um, okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> so little table. They are for the circles to me just zero to pi. Should be sideways. Two zero two. So that's gonna give you the circle. And then the limason. Probably need to go all the way to two pi. Let's see. Okay. So plug zero uh in there, you get one four one negative two and one. So this is biggest in the vertical direction. This is biggest to the right. So we definitely need at least four up to the right. Um, <clears throat> now, I think it, you know, it could make a difference at how well you draw these, depending on how complicated these intersections are. So um, four up, one, two, three, four, one, Two. Um, okay, so the circle is there. That's pretty simple. Sideways, like we predicted. This uh, this one should be kind of vertical. Zero one pi two four uh, pi one uh, three pi two is negative two, so it's a, it has an inner loop. So let's see, it's gonna look like that. And then it's gonna go through here. Now, um, I mean, there's some clear intersections. They definitely intersect at the pole. They definitely intersect here. So, I mean, zero and one are out. Um, so, yeah, at least have these two intersections and then do they intersect again here do these actually overlap or not overlap so um <clears throat> that'd be the the tough part uh do they overlap again do they do we get that third intersection I'm pretty sure, i don't think there's four unless you count the pole multiple times um but trying to figure out if they intersect here. Um, I mean, it looks like it might be around, uh, I don't know if it'd be around pi over four or something like that. I mean, you could check, plug pi over four in here, see if it gives you that answer. Let's try it, let's, this is just a, let's try pi over four, yeah. Just as a guess. Um, 
be two it'd be two times root two over two plus one plus three times uh, root two over two. No, er, eh, I don't think that's gonna work. Anyways, uh, this is a tough one. Let's try it. Let's <clears throat> let's take a quick look on our calculator. Um, we're in uh, we're in polar mode. <clears throat> Uh, the two graphs are 2 cosine theta and 1 plus 3 sine theta. Window, 0, 2 pi. Uh, and I guess, well, yeah, there's a couple ways to use your calculator. Um, X min, let's say negative 2 to 3. Y min. Say negative two to five. Let's graph it. So that's a circle. And then here's that Lemus on with the inner loop. So from this picture, they clearly do cross cross again right here, right? Um, so from this graph, it'd be B three. The other way to do it is to go to function mode and to put this equation in. Um, one plus three cosine x minus two, sorry, should be a sine minus two uh, cosine x uh, window. We're just looking for x intercepts and we're only looking for them between zero and two pi. So we can make the y uh, window small. Okay, so there's one answer. <clears throat> There's two answers. Mm. So the thing about this is mm, you're trying to find where the radius is equal, which could happen at different angles. Anyways, we can go three. There's definitely another one here if we graphed it really well. I mean, we could have made our graph a little better. Okay, that was, that was a lot of time on that problem. Okay, uh, let's see. Points of intersection for these two graphs. Now we're actually looking for the points of intersection, so I think we need to try and do it without. Uh, I mean, we could graph these. It's a, it's a circle and a four petaled, you know, rose curve. And so, I mean, if I do a quick sketch, that's the circle. And then the rose uh, curve has a, has a radius of one. So it would fit inside of that circle. And um, when does that equal zero? No, when does that equal one? Uh, two theta equals zero plus pi k. Theta equals zero plus pi over two k. So you have a pedal here pi over two, pi, three pi over two. <clears throat> so it's gonna look, you know, uh, it, it's, it would draw these in here. So, and I think this circle actually might fit perfectly in there. So, it, you know, it might be something that kind of looks like this. And we're looking for the intersection. So it's gonna definitely intersect at the pole. Um, just based off the graph. So anything with a pole in it is good. Anything without the pole is out. There's definitely an intersection. So we've narrowed it down at least to three choices. But if we were trying to find these, now how would you solve this? Um, I might go ahead and use the double angle identity for uh, <clears throat> cosine, <clears throat> which is. Um, cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, but then you would want to get it all in terms of one trig, which would probably be cosine because you already have a cosine here. So you replace <clears throat> sine squared with one minus cosine squared. <clears throat> and then you get everything on one side. So we have two cosine squared theta minus cosine theta minus one equals zero. You can factor it to cosine theta, cosine theta. 
and uh, it'd be a one and a one, and it would be negative here, positive here. So cosine theta equals negative one half, and cosine theta equals one. Reference angle pi over three, quadrants two and three. So we're getting theta <coughs> equals two pi over three, four pi over three. Uh, over here we're getting theta equals zero and two pi, which are pretty much the same point. <coughs> These are the angles we're looking for. It looks like the polar coordinates of these. So um, it's kind of tough. See, the, the reason they put the pole here and they don't put it as a angle comma or zero comma angle because these graphs go through the pole at different points. So they intersect there, but and they have the same radius, but it, they don't happen at the same angle necessarily. <clears throat> So you're not going to find the pole ones from this um, because 0 and 2 pi is out here. So that's that first angle. <clears throat> <clears throat> so do any of these have an angle of 0? 1, 0 is definitely on there. This is radius of 1, theta equals 0 for both of them. So it's got to have 1, 0 in it which those all do. <clears throat> and then there's this other place where it looks like they might intersect here and here. So, I mean, just based off of like the fact that I expect to get two more answers, I might go with that one. Otherwise we could, uh, you know, plug these, uh, plug these angles in zero. This is the pole, I think zero and two pi. <clears throat> And this one, so you notice right here, two pi over three and four pi over three. So, I mean, you could go ahead and confirm it. Two pi over three is over here. That's why it's gotta be negative. And four pi, over, four pi over three is over here. And that's why it's gotta be negative. That's why both of the radius end up being negative. So, I don't know, it's good enough. Okay, number three, the graphical curve is, what kind of shape? Well, it's, Definitely not a circle. It's definitely not a pedal curve. Uh, it's definitely not a cardioid. It's a lemison. I mean, <clears throat> maybe the easiest way is just do a quick sketch. I mean, we narrowed it down to two, though. Uh, that's going to be seven, three, negative one, three, seven. So it's really big to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> one, two, three. And it has an inter it's an inner loop. Right there, this guy gave it away. So <clears throat> has this inner loop. If it was flattened or sorry, oops, one box, wrong one. If it were flattened, it'd be you get a point out here. Okay, number four, the area of the right half of the polar curve. So maybe a quick sketch might be good. Um, this, this is a cardioid. Um, do a quick table. So we plug zero in here and get one, two, one, zero, one. It's a vertical. Okay, so 0, 1, pi over 2, 2, pi 1, 2 pi over 2, 0. It's a cardioid. Okay, we're doing the right half, okay, which is the same as the left half. And uh, so I guess we got to, you know, show our work that the area of, of the polar curve is 1 half r squared d theta. <clears throat> now, what we need to do, we could do the right half or the left half. <clears throat> This is theta equals zero right here, by the way. This is theta equals pi over two. This is theta equals three pi over two. Now, what you can't do, um, so when we set this up, this is what P 
people might be tempted to do, they might say, okay, well, let's go from in the direction this is going is like this, right? You know, so you could say, oh, let's go three pi over two to pi over two. But that's going to give you a negative answer because you're going from a bigger limit. Essentially what you're doing is you're, you're going, you're going backwards. Uh, we could do pi over two to three pi over two, but that would be the right half, which is the same. The other way to do it is if you do want to start here and go this direction, you would put negative pi over two. So, I mean, there's a few different ways to do it. You do negative pi over two to pi over two, smaller limit to bigger limit to make sure it comes out positive because we're looking for area. Area has to be positive. Or you could do pi over two to three pi over two. And I would find the left half, which is the same. Um, the only difference that's going to make is when you plug limits in. So, can't really use symmetry to get rid of that fraction or anything. I mean, you use symmetry to find the left half to use it for the right half. You gotta square this and you gotta replace it with one half minus one half cosine, it's always cosine. <clears throat> okay. All right. So we're going to integrate this. Uh, it's going to be one half. The antiderivative of a one and one half. So it's three halves theta uh, minus two cosine theta uh, plus one fourth sine. No, minus one fourth sine two theta. Okay. Um, so if you plug pi over two in, you get, uh, three pi over four three pi over four minus two times cosine of pi over two is zero. Uh, sine of pi is zero. And then you plug in negative. 3 pi, you get negative 3 pi over 4 minus 2 times cosine negative pi over 2 is 0. And sine of negative pi is 0. So lots of zero terms. Okay, so um, negative, negative, that's plus. So we're going to get 1 half. And it's going to be 6, 6 pi over 4. So that would be uh 3 pi over 4 for the final answer 3 pi over 4 3 pi over 4 <clears throat> okay um all right let's see which uh integral expression represents okay which integral expression represents the area common that would be the area inside both graphs uh so I don't know, a quick sketch might help. I'm going to do it right here. It's a circle and a cardioid. Um, so the circle, uh, if you plug 0 and you get 1, and pi over 2, you get 0. So this is what that circle looks like. And then um, the cardioid, you plug zero and you get one, and you plug pi over two in and you get two. And then you get one. Okay, so quick sketch is helpful. Um, and we're looking for the area that's common to them. So I would say it's this area right here. Now to find that area, you have to break it up into the parts of it that are bordered by an angle and the edge of that shape. So we're going to have to find this area from the circle, okay? And we're going to have to find this area from the cardioid. And you got to figure out what the angles are for those. So this is theta equals zero for both of them. And this is theta equals pi over two for the circle. So we're definitely going to want to go zero. It's definitely going to involve two different integrals. You're not going to be able to do this in one integral. So that guy should be out. So we're looking for one of them where it's going to be one half 
zero to pi over two of the circle squared, which is cosine theta squared. So we definitely need that in there. So are there any of these that have that one half cosine squared, zero to pi over two? Okay, I guess you could do the whole circle zero to pi and use, and then cut it in half or something, I don't know. So I don't think that one's gonna work because of the pi. These look good. This one needs a one half, so I think that one's out. And then the other one is gonna start here with at three pi over two and end at two pi to get that. Because you wanna this is when that this is when that portion of the graph is graphed on the cardioid is three pi over two to two pi. So the other one needs to be one half three pi over two to two pi of one plus sine theta squared d theta. So uh, three pi over two to two pi. I think this one looks good. This one has the wrong limit there. This one has the wrong limit also. Um, this one also has the wrong limit. So anyways, there you go. That's common on the AP test that they'll have you set it up. So you, you, you know, okay. Find the solution to the differential equation. So we've been solving some differential equations. So we separate the variables, right? dp over p squared equals 4dt. Uh, we integrate both sides. This is p to the negative two dp. So it's gonna be p to the negative one over negative one equals four t plus c. Um, might rewrite it without negative exponents. And then we have this initial condition. So if we plug one in for t, we should get two out for p. And so uh, c equals negative four and a half or negative nine halves. Um, and then, I mean, and this is one way to do it. There's another option because it's multiple choice. So then we have negative one over p, four t minus nine halves. Um, I'm going to flip both sides, but they gotta be in a single fraction to do that. So this is eight t minus nine over two. So you could flip both sides and multiply by the negative. So do we see that one? Well, this is this is this is it because if you take it, if you just if you apply the negative to the bottom, you get that. So that's another version of it. The other option is <clears throat> you could uh, one, you could just plug one in and see if any of these don't give you a two, which I think a lot of them don't. This one doesn't. This one doesn't. <laughs> this one doesn't. Uh, this one. I don't know if you plug if you plug one into this one, it gives you two. If you plug one into this one, uh, it also gives you two. So then you could take the derivatives of these to see if they give you that derivative. But I think just solving it was the best option. <clears throat> Okay, identify each polar equation by matching it to one of its descriptions. <clears throat> so um, it's talking about symmetry and roses and stuff like that. So it might be just good right here. This is a rose with three petals and a radius <clears throat> equal to two. And it should be horizontal, which means it should have a symmetry up and down. <clears throat> Um, this one is not a rose, not a circle. Not, it's a, maybe a limousine of some kind. It's definitely going to be vertical in nature. Uh, this is a rose curve with four petals and a radius of four, and it's going to be vertical. So it's going to have a left right symmetry. This is a circle or one petal rows with a ray with a diameter 
of 3, and it's going to be horizontal. It's going to be sideways. This is a cardioid, and it's going to be uh, horizontal. <clears throat> this is some kind of lemason, and it's going to be horizontal. So one of these has an loop, one doesn't. So I guess we should figure out. I mean, I don't try and memorize that, but um, if you plug 0 in here, you get 4. Pi over 2, you get 5. Pi, you get uh, 3. So this one, I think, is lemson, convex, or flattened. And this one, if you plug 0 in, you get 4. You plug pi over 2 in, you get 1. You plug in pi, you get negative 2. So it brings it back in. So this one has an inner loop. You could graph them if you want. I'm going to do a little table. This is a circle with a diameter of 2, not a radius, diameter, and it is going to be vertical. So <clears throat> circle uh, symmetric to the polar axis. That would be like a circle centered symmetric to the polar axis. Circle symmetric to the line perpendicular to the polar axis. Rows with three petals. Well, that's definitely option four, right? Lemison with an inner loop. We found that. That's this guy. Lemison with a flattened loop. That's this guy. Cardioid. There is only one cardioid in the whole list. So we got that guy. Rows with three petals, rows with four petals, and uh, so this is rows with four petals. So this one should be IV, and this one be I I I. Uh, and so then we have two circles left. This one is going to look like this, and this one's going to look like this. Okay, so it says. Circle symmetric to the polar axis. So this polar axis, I guess, would be that initial ray. Uh, so we'd go with this one is 1. And this one's symmetric to the line perpendicular to the polar axis, like the y axis. So the polar axis is like the x-axis. Perpendicular to it would be the y-axis. So, all right. OK. Um, let's see. Number eight, find the number of points of intersection of the polar curves. Um, it might be good to just draw a sketch of these. This is a rose curve with four petals. This is some kind of lemison. So uh, so zero be one, three. 1, negative 1, 1. And then the rows curve is going to be when um, plus or minus 1 equals cosine 2 theta. So 2 theta equals um, 0 plus pi k. Theta equals 0 plus pi over 2k. So theta equals 0, pi over 2 pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. <clears throat> so the graph of this is going to look like, OK, that has a raise of 1. This goes all the way up to 2. So and that goes all the way up to 3. So um, petals are here, 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 and here. You would you could draw the angles. I cut them in half. So that's the first angle, second angle, third angle, fourth angle. The other graph is one, three, one. That's an inner loop. So it looks like this. And it comes in 
and it has a little in a loop there. Now, this is getting kind of crazy because it's like, do they cross here and here? They definitely cross here and here. They definitely cross at the origin. Um, they definitely cross here. I would say there's at least four. There might be, you know, a couple more here and here. Um, I mean, I'm going, I'm thinking at least four. I think my answers are over three. The other way to do it is to try and do algebraically and set these equal to each other. Um, and use double angle identity, cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, <clears throat> and then change the cosine to one minus sine squared. So uh, we get two sine squared, if we move those to the left, uh, plus two sine theta, and then you have a one, and then you subtract this one over here, so that's zero. So then you could factor GCF out. And so we get a uh, sine theta equals zero and sine theta equals negative one. And so theta equals zero plus pi k. So theta equals zero pi two pi. And here theta equals um, three pi over two <clears throat> plus two pi k. So theta equals three pi over two. Now, usually this isn't going to give you the pole uh, intersections, which I'd count at least as one. And two pi and zero are the same thing. So I'm going to count that as two, three, and then the pole would be four. So I'm going to say my answer, <clears throat> one of my solutions was wrong. I'm going to go with four. Find the points of intersection of these two gra uh, of these two graphs. Uh, you have a circle and you have a cardioid. Uh, we could do a quick graph. So um, two zero two, and then Plug those in, um, we get six, three, zero, three, six. It's really, so everything's big to the right. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, two, okay, so. That's the circle. And then the cardioid, six, three, zero, negative three. And that's just a regular old cardioid. And so I think they only intersect right there at the pole. I mean, just based off the graph, the answer would be the pole. Otherwise, um, if you set these equal to each other, Let's see if it finds the pole. Um, so we could say negative cosine theta equals three, cosine theta equals negative three, which is not possible, okay? But that doesn't mean, okay? You'd have to look at the pole and you could, you could verify that these both actually do have a radius of zero but they're gonna happen at different angles, which is kind of interesting, right? So I guess without a picture, without imagining what these looks like, you could verify that they both go through the pole, but they're not gonna happen at the same angle. It's just gonna verify that they happen at some angle. <clears throat> so this, this one goes through the pole twice. Uh, the circle, which, and this one, goes through the pole once, 
but they're not at the same angles, but that's okay. So we're gonna go with pull. And the picture of the sketch helped make that uh, easy. Okay, the graph of this is a what? Uh, it's a circle for sure. It's not a four petal flower, it's not eight petals, not a cardioid with a radius of two, because this is the diameter of the circle. So there you go. Um, the graphs intersect at how many points? I don't know if you guys are having fun with these yet. So this is a circle and this is a four petaled rose. So I guess we're trying to do a quick sketch of these. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, and then we could try algebraically too, just for fun. Um, okay. Uh, let's see, if you plug zero in, you get one, zero, one. It's a circle. Plug zero into that, you get two, cosine of pi, negative two. Oh, we usually don't do that with for the rose curse. We usually don't do a table. We say uh, plus or minus two equals two cosine theta. Plus or minus one equals cosine two theta. Two theta equals zero plus pi k. Theta equals zero plus pi over two k. So theta equals zero pi over two pi three pi over two and uh, two pi. So the let's see let's sketch this. light dash circle. The petals are going to be here, 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 the tips. Draw the angle in half. Uh, so this is the first petal. This is the second one. This is the third one. This is the fourth one. And then you have a circle that's like right here. Okay. So they definitely intersect here. <clears throat> they definitely intersect here. Well, I, I, think they intersect somewhere around here and then maybe they intersect again so maybe five I mean just that would be my guess unless this pedal fits the circle fits perfectly in this pedal which I don't think it would but um, algebraically we could try this and use the double angle identity for cosine and then then change uh, sine to one minus cosine squared Pythagorean identity and then so that'd be minus two or plus two okay so uh, two cosine squared minus uh, plus two cosine squared before cosine squared and then minus cosine theta to move it to the other side, and then minus two equals zero, and then two cosine theta, two cosine theta, maybe. Um, yeah, I don't think we factor that. So we could use a <laughs> quadratic formula to solve for cosine theta, be a negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So that'd be 1 plus or minus. That would be at 1632, 33 over 8. <laughs> and then you could um, find the different angles that give you those values. Anyways, I'm going to go with just the I was getting crazy. All right. Or you could graph it on graph calculator. Should we try that real quick? I mean, I didn't say we could. So uh, you want to go to polar mode probably and then go to y equals and then this would be cosine theta and two cosine two theta 
and the window would be 0 2 pi and then probably I don't know negative uh, negative 2.5 to 2.5 negative 2.5 to 2.5 just based off my my sketch so that is the circle and that's the rose curve and then what we could do is we could do like a zoom box and all the interesting stuff is happening right around here so that's a circle so here where's the rose curve there's a rose curve so definitely one two three four five okay all right uh 12 the graph of this is symmetric to what okay some kind of lemus on maybe we should just graph it real quick and the answer might be really obvious plug zero in we get two we get six we get two we get negative two we get two um so it's really big vertically one two three four five six one two one two one okay all right so um looks like it might have an interlude. so zero two pi over two six pi over two pi is two three pi over two is negative two so you get that inner loop <laughs> it's going to go through the bowl. So it's leaving us on with the inner loop. So symmetric to the polar axis, no, to the line theta equals pi over 2, which would be straight down, yes. Pi over 4, no. Pi over 6, no. It does have symmetry. So we can go with B. Okay. All right, the graph of this equation, what is this? Okay, uh, this one's kind of tricky. If you move the cosine theta over here, and then you think, well, what would that Cartesian equation be? Well, what's r cosine theta? x equals r cosine theta. So this is a vertical line. Uh, that's probably the best way. Uh, it intersects polar axis at one point. Yes. Intersects at two points, no. Polar axis is like the x-axis. No line can intersect it at two points. Does not intersect, no it does. It's vertical, if it were horizontal, it would, that would be true. Intersects line theta, pi over two at one point. Uh, no, because this is a vertical line itself. Intersects, no. So that was kind of a tricky one. Okay, last one. A little response problem. And these pre response problems just pretty much often just use all the different kinds of things that we've been doing. And they just put it into one problem. They often give you a picture of the graph, which is nice. So you don't have to sketch it. And so that, that saves it and actually saves a little bit of time. Okay. Uh, the figure shows the graphs of a circle. Okay. With the radius of square root of two okay and then they give you another circle with a radius of one and it says the graphs intersect points one one right here which it looks like and one negative one which that also looks like uh, let r be the shaded region of the first quadrant ba uh, bounded by two circles um set up an expression set up an expression just set it up involving one or more integrals with respect to x to, that represents area of r so this seems like a polar problem but it's kind of not because everything's in rectangular coordinates and they're asking to do an x and then y so if we want to find this area in terms of x we want that that's vertical slicing right and we'd have to do two different break it up into two different parts of it now we'd want to get these equations as y in terms of x to be able to do that. So the first one 
is going to be uh, y squared equals 2 minus x squared, and you take square root of both sides, plus or minus, the top and the bottom halves. So we're going to be using the top half. And then the other one is going to be y squared equals 1 minus x minus 1 squared, square root of both sides, plus or minus. And I'm thinking we'd probably go ahead and want to foil that out. And this one's also going to be the positive. So that would be <clears throat> um, x squared minus 2x plus 1. And the negative would cancel that out. So the ones go away. And so we have a negative x squared plus 2x. So those are the equations of the tops of those circles. And so then the integral would be we would we would go from 0 to 1 to do that first chunk, and that's this circle. And then we would go from 1 to whatever this point is. Well, that's the square root of 2, right? We're thinking in terms of x, square root of 2, and it would be this, uh, this first circle. So there you go. B says, let's do the same thing, but with with vertical, with uh, with respect to Y. So those are going to be horizontal slices. Okay. So we need to get those equations, those equations as X in terms of Y. So you're going to go back here and say, okay, well, X squared equals 2 minus Y squared, square root of all sides, plus or minus. Now we're looking for that circle. That's the big one. We're looking for the the right side of the circle. And then the other one, x minus 1 squared, 1 minus y squared, you take square root of both sides, plus or minus. And for this one, uh, and then you're going to add one both sides. For this one, we want the left side of the circle, right? So we want... 1 minus that. We want the left side of the circle. Okay, so then if we're going to do the slices to find the area, it's really it's the area between two curves, so you need to do right curve minus left curve. So the right curve was this one, and the left curve was this one. dy in, in the vertical direction, 0 to 1. So this is really just a bunch of Calgay B stuff right now. At least it says C. Oh, C. The polar equations of the circles are this. Okay. Okay. Set up an expression involving one or more integrals with respect to polar angle theta that finds the R. So in this case, we need to find the intersection, which I believe is going to be a pi over four, but maybe we should show it. Um, Why? I don't know if you want to do that. We can show it. I think it's not that. I don't even think it's that hard. Set the radiuses equal to each other. So alpha equals pi over 4, quadrant 1, quadrant 4. So theta equals um, pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. But we want that one in the first quadrant for sure, right? So that's theta equals pi over 4, which I think we're pretty certain it was because it goes through 1, 1. So it has to be a 45 degree angle. Okay, so we found that. Now we have to find this area first, and that goes that that's created by the edge of that circle. And then find this area starting here and ending here. So we, we got to start at theta equals 0, go to pi over 4 on that bigger circle, and then start at pi over 4 and go to pi over 2 to get that other one. So we're going to do area equals 1 half, and so we're going to do 0 to pi over 4, and that's of this circle right here, square root of 2 squared d theta plus 1 half pi over 4 to pi over 2 of the other circle, which was 2 cosine theta squared d theta. So that part of it, 
was more related to what we've been doing. Um, anyways, I, I don't really expect that you would see something like this on more current uh, AP tests. And I don't think we're going to see anything like this on any of the other free response examples I give you. But there you go. Duh. This was not really like what the free response questions usually are. They usually do have an area question. So part C was, but then they usually do some other stuff. So, okay.